we played a team that I thought played exceptionally well in Richmond. Um, every mistake we made, which was quite a bit in the first half defensively, they made us pay. Um, it felt like every ball bounced to them and didn't bounce to us. Right when we cut to one, it just it got, you know, we fouled three point shooter three times. Um, it just was one of those nights you're like, are we ever going to get over the hump? And uh, the effort that our guys played with in the second half, really the last two and a half minutes of the first half got us back in the game. And then the start of the second half was terrific. And uh, the effort was just off the charts. Um, guys battled. We got smarter defensively, um, you know, and really probably could have won a little bit easier, but we didn't do our job there late in press offense and at the foul line. I think Eric's could have made those two free throws, gone up eight. It might have ended 20 minutes earlier too. So, but um, really a great win for us. Just a, just a great win. Um, we needed it. Uh, we needed a battle like that and to come back and do what you have to do. And I, I know you guys are watching games like I'm watching. It's really hard to win a college basketball game um, when you're playing good team. So uh, proud of my group. Now I got the first question coming here from Kareem at the Washington Post. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Maryland's legal newspaper has named the Jacklitz Law Group the very best, best personal injury trial firm and best civil litigation firm in the entire state. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. The Jacklitz Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get the lawyers. Appreciate it. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about these second half comebacks. Is this just kind of, are you, are you guys getting used to this? And, and, <laughs> and you guys, you know, start to kind of relish that moment. And the second one was just want to ask specifically about that, uh, that step back. Um, yeah. To kind of really kind of grab the moment up there. He asked me about the second half comebacks. I, I, I think, um, you know, whatever it takes to win. I, I'd rather be up at halftime and then play well in the second half and not make it so close. But it's who we are right now. Um, we started the game really stagnant on offense again, just really stagnant. And we worked on offense for three days really hard, just trying to get better. Um, and, uh, you know, but we got to 87 tonight, which is a lot of points for us. Um, so. Yeah, it was a great second half comeback. The guys showed me a lot about themselves tonight. And just, I mean, the, the, the effort that they played with in the second half was just terrific. And I know watching at home probably doesn't really tell you the story. You were here, Kareem, how great it was. So, and then, you know, uh, I was happy for Fats. He asked me, you asked me about the step back three he made. I think it put us up five or six. I can't remember what it put us up, but, you know, they, they, they gone at, they've gone at it, Rhode Island and, Richmond have gone at it. A10 is a great league. So it was a big time shot. And uh, I was standing right behind him. It looked good right when he shot it. So it was, it was, it was big. And it, it could have been anybody else's game at that time. And he, he made a big time three. So I was happy for Fats. I thought he got downhill the whole second half. I thought our decision making on the break was much better in the second half. Um, and then I, you know, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Akeem and all the big shots that he made tonight. We needed every one of them. We'll go to Jacob Richmond from the Diamondback. Hey, Coach. First of all, happy Thanksgiving. Um, you. So you talked about Hakeem a little bit there, but after, after you know, having some trouble with this shot, you know, early on this season, what does a night like tonight, a performance like tonight, do both for him and what you think that adds to the team? Well, he hit a couple against Hofstra, uh, which were big in the first half there, but he just did it all night, continuous, and they hit the big one in the corner to put us up one, um, which was really a tough shot as the shot clock went down. So, you know, Eric, Eric's going to give us offense. Fat's going to give us offense. Q's going to give us offense. You know, he was better tonight. Juju's going to give us offense. Dante's still a work in progress, figuring himself out. He was great on defense. So to add Akeem out there scoring for us is, is huge for us. I mean, we haven't shot the ball well. <clears throat> I don't know what we shot from three. I haven't looked at stats yet. But we made a lot for us, made a lot of threes for us. So uh, it's big. It's it's really big for us. And I can't tell you how big this win is. And, you know, we'll see what happens Saturday morning. But just to be down to really haven't played our best basketball this year yet, 
to practice so hard and feel like we were going to come out and play better. And we didn't in the first half, just a just unbelievable effort and just toughness, just mental toughness. I mean, we cut it to two, go back to six. We, you know, I think it went all the way to eight. One time we cut it to two and went all the way back to eight and just, we were just mentally so tough and they showed me something tonight. Um, and that's really encouraging, uh, you know, moving forward. A lot of guys stepped up and made a lot of big time plays. Go to Lauren Rosh from Testudo Times. Hi, Coach. Um, after George Mason, you were talking about how the team was kind of um, hanging their heads a little bit and that the energy wasn't there and that kind of contributed to not being able to bounce back. How do you see kind of that shift from a game like George Mason now and kind of what have you seen in terms of a morale shift and how does that add to being able to bounce back like that? Yeah, so we've talked a lot about morale shift. Uh, we had time to do it. We had five games in 10 days and you're just trying to figure out a way to win the next game. And and we didn't it didn't shift during those five games. And it really shifted here. And I thought our bench was great. I thought you guys weren't here. The fan support was terrific. It was so loud in here. I think we have over 200 fans here, which is about 150 more than anybody else uh, in the building. So it it was really huge for us. And they kept fighting. Our guys kept fighting. And um, but our morale changed and a win like this was huge for us. And some of the guys talked about, you know, Erica Allen, Dante talked about in the locker room, like, hey, this is what we're supposed to do at Maryland. We're supposed to win these games, we're supposed to come back. We expect to win. We expect to be in the NCAA tournament. We're nowhere near that right now. But uh, this is what we expect. And um, so when the new guys can understand that and grasp that, that's that's going to help us. Thank you. Bruce Posner, uh, Red Turtle Productions. Yeah, Coach, congrats on the win. Uh, did you – this year's non-conference schedule <laughs> is so much tougher, in my opinion, than anyone you've had. Is that – was that by accident? Was that part of your planning? What went into your scheduling? Because it's – you know, minus the first game, you had, and even that was tough. You have, you have really faced – much tougher opposition in these early games than you have in the past, in my opinion. You tell my AD that, that would help. I mean, <laughs> he wants me always to schedule hard. No, we, when we got the transfers and we just felt like we were going to be a good team, we wanted to challenge ourselves. I think the Atlantic 10 is a terrific league. It, it might, whew, I've been around on the East Coast here now, going in my 11th year. This might be the best Atlantic 10 ever. Um, it is really, really a deep, league and a really really good league so we played three Atlantic 10 teams they were all good teams <clears throat> um played Vermont who will probably win their league um so we wanted to play good teams um and then you know you add the Florida at the Barclays um you got the ACC challenge which will be a you know another tough game then we get to play the Louisville or Mississippi State yeah I'll, I'll say this Bruce it's the it's it's the hardest non-conference schedule I've ever played and not not in name maybe not name of teams, but just the portals changed everything. And it is so hard to win. And that was a team where COVID, a lot of those guys wouldn't have been on the court tonight if COVID didn't hit, right? Right. And, so, and I was like, okay, you can play Richmond down there. And I'm like, oh, do I really want to play Richmond? But I was like, oh, okay, that'll help us, right? And so I challenged us. And it's been no fun, Bruce. I ain't going to lie to you. It feels like February to me. And um, <laughs> hasn't been fun, but I think it's really going to help us moving forward and you know our next few games are against bigger name opponents bigger teams um and hopefully that's going to help us um that we're prepared for them but uh yeah Bruce you're, you're absolutely right it's it's been it's been an incredibly tough uh team uh schedule but uh it, it was it was planned and then you know even George Mason surprised us they were a little bit better the transfers they got in they were a little bit better than they thought and then they, they played the perfect game against us and we couldn't overcome it so uh, but it helped us you know sometimes when you lose a game early it really helps helps you and helps you fight and helps me get the attention of the players all right last question for coach Turgeon tonight uh, Sam Ostry from Testudo Times Hey, Coach, can you just talk about the, extending the defensive pressure in that second half and just speeding them, them up and what that did for that, run, that big run you guys went on? Yeah, so they were in such a great rhythm. We were just trying to get them out of the rhythm. And so I think we had one or two steals. They took a quick shot, which really helped us. Um, but we were just trying to shorten the clock so we didn't have to guard them for 30 seconds. 
And, um, and so they would start their offense with 21 or 20. So you had to guard them for 20 seconds. And that's a lot easier than 30 seconds as, as, as fast as they move and as well as they cut. Uh, so that was the whole idea behind it. And then I screwed up there late. We, we, I wanted to slow them down. They threw it ahead and the kid hit the three, cut it to two and made the game a game again. But, um, you know, we're, we're a work in progress. But, yeah, I, I just wanted to – it wasn't so much to speed them up. It was just to try to get them out of their rhythm. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. All right. Happy Thanksgiving, guys.